I hear <clears throat> the CDC, Fauci, and even doctors who advocate early treatment refer to some effectiveness of the mRNA vaccines. However, when I look in the literature for such evidence, all I can find is a statistical study that includes vaccinated individuals in cohorts so young that they are very unlikely to be at risk for hospitalization or death. I haven't yet seen a study just focusing on 60 plus year, year olds at risk, comparing vaccinated to the unvaccinated in that age group. How have you found one? Am I thinking about this problem correctly? Thanks. Love you guys. You've really helped me get through these past two years and remain somewhat sane. Um, <clears throat> so I would point to, uh, can you share my screen or can you not? Yeah. Oh yeah. No? I think so. Laptop screen. Alt L? Is that what that? Alt lowercase L? Um, yeah, look at that. So we linked to this. This is this is our friend. That's not his real name. Um, Dr. Rolligator. Mm. Um, we linked to this in the COVID piece that uh, that we published on my Substack back at the very end of July of last year. Um, and I have not reviewed what his arguments are. Um, and they are um, for this, so I'm not. I'm not going to try to summarize. But um, he here actually. I, I can't look at my notes because I don't have my screen. So you want to give me my screen back? <laughs> um, go go there, and what he finds is, I believe, um, that f actually, for the oldest cohort, there may be. A benefit and what he finds is no evidence of benefit for um all of the younger cohorts including you know in, um, i can including people i can't remember what his or number of age groups is like um for the over 65 year group uh, there appears to be some some benefit and for everyone else uh, he finds no evidence of benefit uh so i would i would try there uh no gators are not lizards actually yeah. no uh, reptiles though True, true. Okay. I was recently infected with COVID-19 and went to a local hospital to receive a monoclonal antibody infusion. I was in a waiting room with other coronavirus patients waiting for the same treatment. They went around asking each patient some basic registration questions, including their vaccination status. There was a, I'm going to ask you to show my screen again in a minute. Sorry. Um, there was a grand total of one person in the room who was unvaccinated. Meanwhile, the official statistics from New York State are still saying that breakthrough cases are the exception and that most infections are in unvaccinated people. What is going on? Are they manipulating the data or is it just that the population eligible for monoclonal antibodies is more likely to get vaccinated because of the higher risk? Interesting. Um, in, I mean, it could be both, of course. I rather suspect it may be both, but someone responded, you can show this here now, um, to David. Uh, with this Twitter link, which yeah, here it is, uh, all cases, which shows, I'm not remembering exactly where this is from, all cases are categorized as unvax until they find a matching vax record. All unknowns remain classified as unvaxed. This inflates the unvax numerator and deflates the vax numerator. And, um, and then there's age adjustment that we can't see. <clears throat> so this is just, this is the receipts on this. Cases that don't match to a vaccination record are classified as unvaccinated, including unknowns. This is from the New York City uh, thing. And yeah, it goes it goes on and on. I'm not going to spend time here, so you can give that, <clears throat> that back to me. But um, I mean, of course they are, right? Like in a city, I don't know what the numbers are supposedly in New York, New York State, um, but if... If a majority of people are vaccinated and they can't, and someone has claimed to be vaccinated and they've come in with COVID, regardless of whether they've come in with COVID, they've come in with meningitis, they've come in with a scraped knee, whatever it is. If a majority of people are vaccinated and a person has claimed that they are vaccinated, the default assumption should be that they're vaccinated. I mean, in fact, you don't even need the second point. If a majority of people are vaccinated within a population and you don't know what default to put them into, then the default is you put them into the vaccinated camp. Yep. If they're also claiming that they're vaccinated, you of course put them in the vaccinated camp. But mm, but we're not going to do that, are we? Oh, we're just being cautious. No, you're not. You've picked a default that has no logical basis, and it feeds your narrative. It's insane. So I, I don't even know why we end up here. The number of instances in which a measure has been misstructured so as to report a particular sacred story 
is huge, right? We've seen this across everything. And then we've seen other efforts to specifically avoid collecting the evidence that would tell you whether or not that narrative was right. Yeah. Right. The failure to do autopsies, for example, in people who've had adverse events. Yeah. So. Yes. The yes. problem is this is so obvious. <clears throat> I don't understand why every statistician in the world is not screaming about what has happened with the data here, even mm -hmm. if they're believers. Right? right. There's no way that somebody who knew what they were doing could be organically fooled by this level of what is obviously not incompetence. These are errors that all go in one direction. And uh, so anyway, we get blue in the face and say, well, but, you know, check out this measure. And, you know, um, yes, there's no reason we should be getting yes. hoarse trying to explain this. Oh, my God. Yes. It's transparent. <clears throat> and it is. I mean, unfortunately, you know, we unfortunately. We haven't been talking nearly as much over the last several months on the podcast about what we're finding in the literature because it's just so fucking untrustworthy. Like it's, it's just, it's just almost impossible to do it at that level. And I want to say before it disagrees, Katha says, I feel like we are living in the theater of the absurd. Suddenly that made sense as an art form. I had exactly this thought. I actually, I love theater of the absurd and I have a lot of um, plays. We actually had a, two of our dear friends, Rita, uh, section from Rosencrantz and Guildenstern and Dead Stoppard's play at our wedding, um, <clears throat> the opening scene, the coin flip, and I've got a lot of Ionesco and um, and and other um, other playwrights on my shelf, and I I was I went looking for some relevant passage to read on Dark Horse a few months ago and just couldn't. It's just too absurd. <laughs> like it, it just doesn't make sense out of context. And I think maybe that was the point. And maybe I should make that point. Like I, I, I wanted to read a section to point out that this is like theater of the absurd, but out of context, it doesn't make sense. And I, I fear that that's what's going to happen here, right? Like what we're live, what we're all living through right now, won't be believed. It just doesn't make sense out of context. Well, this this was my point about about Orwell. Is mm -hmm. that the problem with Orwell is that it sounds too preposterous to happen. So it sounds like it must be an exaggeration. And the point is, it actually turns out it isn't one, right? In fact, we're actually arguing over whether two plus two equals four. Mm -hmm. uh, so <clears throat> yes, it, it, it's almost impossible. It's going to be almost impossible to preserve the sense of absurdity yeah. and the inability to establish the most basic facts or rules of engagement or anything or rights. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what to do about it, but there is something hopeful in this time, the size of the population that has seen it. And this is why we're fighting about Joe Rogan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you know, the, I have grave concerns about what's going to happen there because zero is a special number and Rogan mm -hmm. is the reason we're not at zero. Yep. Yep. Do... Virologists understand so well the relationship between genotype and phenotype of a virus that they would know which mutations would render it milder without testing it on people, thus making feasible Brett's white hat hacker for Omicron. Hey guys, that was a clip from our monthly private Q&A that you can get access to at my, Heather Hyang's, Patreon. And you can also get access there to all of the past paid subscriber content. So please consider joining us there. Did you mention that these private Q&As are the key to living a better life and living to tell the tale? I forgot to do that. These private Q&As are in fact the key to living a better life and what? Living to tell the tale. Living to tell the tale. Go ahead. Live to tell the tale. Join us there. See ya.